beautiful soul. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Emily the Mystic. I am an Akashic Records reader, a psychic medium, an intuitive, a, an intuitive business coach for entrepreneurs, and I am a channeler. And today we are talking all about one of my absolute favorite topics, which is the angelic realm. We're talking about the angels today. What do you need to know about connecting to the angels? How to know if you have a really strong connection to the angelic realm and how to open up this connection more and more. We'll also be talking about a few different types of angel angelic groups that I work with as a channeler so that you can lean more into your angelic side. So without further ado, let's get into it. So today we're talking about the angelic realm. And with that in mind, I want you in this now moment to set the intention to let go of any preconceived notions, ideas, religious ideas, thoughts, things that you've heard before, conditioning programming around who the angels are, how they help us, and kind of who they belong to. Um, one thing that I has really come through for me strongly when I channel through the Akashic Records is that in our human culture, we have put the angels in a lot of boxes with a lot of labels around who they are, what they represent. Um, we've put them in boxes with different names and different labels and categories in order to kind of make sense of them. But the reality is, is that as humans, those are just labels that we use and human words that we use to describe them. But they are a they are their own unique angelic energetic frequency. So we, as you know, if you have been watching my videos, if you follow me on social media, you know that I teach that everything is energy and that every being on earth vibrates at a specific energetic frequency. So do beings in the spirit world. They all have their own unique energies and energetic frequencies. The angels are no exception to this. They have their own unique energies, like a snowflake is very unique. So so are the energy frequencies of the angels and of different angelic groups. So yes, we may use human words and terms to categorize them and uh, call attention to specific angelic groups, but in reality, they are all different energy frequencies and they all have and represent different types of consciousness. So I just wanted to say that as a side note, we really want to try to put things, you know, in a specific box. So today I'm going to be talking about my experience working with the angelic realm, my angelic nature, I guess you could say, and why I feel called to work with the angelic realm, and my experience in working with different types of angels and different frequencies that represent different angels. So this is going to be so much fun and just lean into it and take, of course, as always what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. So here's, let's first talk about how do you know if you have a strong connection to the angels and to the angelic realm so first of all, if you're attracted to this video, you're interested in this topic, automatically that's a nudge for you to know that <laughs> your angels and guides are pushing you to learn more about this topic because your soul feels called to learn more about the angels. So right there, right off the bat, you know that you have a strong connection to the angelic realm if you felt really called in particular to watch this video. But some other signs that you are really connected to the angels and the angelic realm. Um, number one, if you're a really empathic, sensitive soul. So if you are a really highly intuitive, empathic, loving, and emotional person, especially when you were growing up and you really leaned into helping others. You consider yourself to be a helper. You're a giver. You love to give of your time, attention, energy, and love to other people. You love to take care of other people. You just automatically love to step in to help a friend in need. You're that shoulder for people to cry on. You're a great advice giver. And and even if you're just a natural helper in general, a caretaker. So, and this is 
this may not apply to you, but if you have some type of job or career where you help others for a living, maybe you're a nurse or you are work in the medical field, you help people with the physical body, or maybe you help people with the physical body in other ways, such as being a personal trainer or a yoga instructor or a health coach or a nutritionist, a dietitian, for example. Um, maybe you feel called to help people by volunteering. So maybe it's not your full-time profession, but you love to volunteer or you love to give of your time and energy through contributing to charities. Um, those are all really big signs that you have a strong connection to the angelic realm. Maybe you're a teacher, that's another big one. Or you're a mom, you're, uh, you're a full-time mom um, or... Yeah, or you just love, or you're a an animal mom. Maybe you love animals and you love taking care of animals. Um, again, if you're really sensitive, intuitive, and love helping, guiding, loving, taking care of others, that's a really big sign that you have a strong connection to the angelic realm. Um, another really big sign is if you naturally kind of love things related to the clouds so maybe you're really attracted to visual imagery of like the colors white and pink and yellow and gold and soft yellow and sparkly colors those all of those colors and visual representations remind me of the angels so if you're attracted to that type of design or colors or energies um, if you love traveling and flying. One of the <laughs> closest ways that angels feel connected to the angelic realm is by being on a plane. Um, so maybe you're, you love flying, you love uh, being on planes, maybe you love taking helicopter rides, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe you're even a pilot um, and you have a really strong connection to flying in general. That's a really big sign. Maybe you love other types of air sports like paragliding, parasailing, or um, zip lining, things like that, that help you kind of travel through the air. That may be another way or another reason that you feel really connected to the angelic realm. Um, also, I really want to mention too, if you have a fear of heights, no worries, but if you still feel, if you have a fear of heights, what I mean to say is that is normal. You may still really resonate with the angelic realm, even if you do, but if you still feel really connection to the, a strong connection to the clouds and like daydreaming and being up in the clouds and so forth, again, those are all really strong uh, indicators that you have a connection to the angelic realm. Um, and finally, if you really just highly see the potential in other people, if you see the highest, you know, the highest potential in people to a fault, maybe you're that kind of person who attracts relationships, friendships, where you want to heal that person or help them or lead them or guide them emotionally, mentally, spiritually, etc. But that other person may not always be open or may take action on their own healing, their own growth, their own journey. So you may really highly see the potential in other people, but those people that you want to take along for the ride aren't necessarily ready for the healing experience that you want to help them with. So that is a really big sign as well. If you kind of attract people into your life who need a lot of healing um, or who you feel really called to help people struggle. <laughs> I hate to say this, but if you have a lot of people in your life who kind of ride the struggle bus uh, and you're often that person that people lean on for help, support, assistance, that's a really big sign that you are strongly connected to the angelic realm. Because the nature of the energy of the angels is such that they love to help us. They love to help humans in particular. They are, they, of course, they vibrate at the frequency of unconditional love, light, truth, um, miracles, etc. But they also really feel called to help us and to help us here on earth. I mean, that definitely goes for other spiritual groups on spiritual groups um, in other planes as well. Uh, but the angels really, really, they are strong helper souls. 
So let's talk about the angels and different types of angels. So you do some Googling online, you'll see that according to different religions, there may be certain groups of angels. Some people call them the spheres of angels, that there are nine spheres of angels. Um, there are some other numbers that are thrown around out there. You may hear names like the thrones, the cherubim, the dominions, the seraphim, etc. cetera. Um, so there are all these quote unquote hierarchies to the angel groups. Um, I don't want you to think of it in terms of a hierarchy like you'll see out there on the internet. What the guides have shared with me is it's not necessarily a hierarchy in terms of good or bad. That's a concept that's unique to us here on earth, good versus bad. But the different um, categories of angels are different energetic frequencies, right? They're different con types of consciousness. So it's not necessarily that some are more advanced than others. Some may be more energetically evolved than others, but that's not better or worse than another angel group that's less evolved, for example. And again, like I led with the introduction to this video, um, they don't want us to lean into a lot of the labels, <laughs> you know, and titles for the different groups. But I am going to share some really important categories that will help you to understand the different types of angels that are around you that you have access to. We all have access to the angelic realm. We all can connect with the angels. We all have angels on our spirit guide teams. But you may feel more drawn to working with the angels than someone else. I know intuitives and healers who feel more drawn to working with angels than they do with working with Mother Earth and Earth elemental spirits and spirit animals. So just keep that in mind as well. So let's talk again, let's talk about some of the different angel groups that are important to know. Um, so guardian angels are really talked about a lot in modern culture and also in some religions. Guardian angels are, are specific angels that are with us on our spirit guide teams. They do exist, which I love. Guardian angels are with us for our entire life. So they choose to be with us, to watch us, protect us, guide us, guard us from the moment we are born until the moment that we pass to the other side. Um, and guardian angels can help us in terms of physical need. So they can, if they are able to step in to help you, assist you, save you, if you are in physical harm and danger and it's not your time to cross over yet. Note, big emphasis on it's not your time to cross over yet. If for some reason, it is your time to exit, to move to the other side, and you are in physical danger, that may happen. Or if that has happened to somebody in your life, you're hearing this and you're wondering, well, if we all have guardian angels, why didn't they step in to save this person in my life? I just want you to know that it's because for that, that person's soul, their soul's path, their soul's growth, whatever soul contracts they had, they, the guardian angels were not able to assist them at that time. But again, it is for their soul's highest purpose, um, unfortunately. Um, and if that did happen to you, I am so sorry for your loss, but it is important, an important thing for us to know and to recognize. With guardian angels, they will help us if they can. So I do want you to lean into the fact that you do have these beautiful helper angels who can assist you and who can step in physically to help you. For example, if you've ever had the experience of maybe you're crossing a busy street and all of a sudden you feel this like rush of wind kind of pushing you backwards towards the curb of the street and you do, you move backwards, maybe even fall backwards and then all of a sudden a car whizzes by you that you didn't see coming from an, you know, an unknown direction. So that is a really strong example of when a guardian angel can step in to help someone, push you out of the way. I had a crazy client experience a couple of years ago where the client told me that her daughter had been in a car her daughter had been in a car accident and after her daughter was fine, she emerged from the accident unscathed, no bumps or bruises or anything, and it was a serious accident. And on the seat next to her daughter and the, on the passenger seat, her little guardian angel car charm had fallen onto the seat and it was there and it was not broken, even though the rest of the car was mangled and completely destroyed. 
So there's a big example for you of the guardian angels stepping in to assist someone. So they can and they will help you if they are able to. Um, so those are the guardian angels. So you can connect with them. You have the ability to connect with them. They are here to help you. They can also help you with physical things. They can help you if you, if you need help, for example, finding someone to take care of a physical task at your at your house, um, if you need to hire someone to do some work on your house for you, ask the guardian angels to find the right person for you for that task. So it may also be something that you want to try as well. Okay, so moving on from talking about the guardian angels, I also want to talk about the archangels today because the archangels are a really important group to note. They are, if we're thinking about the angel hierarchy, they would be at the higher end of consciousness, of evolution, um, of energetic frequency. And the archangels are omnipresent, meaning they can work with all of us they can work with me and you at the same time. They can assist us in different ways. Uh, so they are very, con from a consciousness level, they're very evolved to be able to assist us with different things that we uh, need help with. Um, so the archangels, I kind of like to refer to them as the big guns because they're so powerful and they can help us in so many different ways. Um, they are well known in a lot of religions as well. Um, so you may be familiar with some of the names that I'm going to share with you. And if that's the case, amazing. Take what you learned from that religious experience. But also I want you to be open to developing a new relationship with one of these angels or all of these angels that I'm going to share my experiences about with you. They are really magical beings and they want to help you. They want to be with you. They want to assist you. Archangels will often be with people as well. So of course, we all have the ability to call them in. I'm going to tell you how to do that at the end of this video. We all have the ability to connect with them. But for some people um, who are going through major life shifts, challenges, transitions, for example, losing a loved one, for example, losing a job, finding a new job, transitioning to a new job, for example, transitioning locations, mo physically moving, um, or going through some other big life shift, maybe a healing crisis, a health crisis of some kind, Archangels were, will very much be present around those people. Even if they're not physically aware of it, the archangels will step in to assist us. So I just want you to know that as well. If you maybe have had a health crisis in the past, um, there was most likely with an archangel with you at that time. So that's pretty cool to know, right? Um, so now you have the ability to recognize that you can consciously call them in and start to work with them, which is so much fun. So let's talk about the different, some of the different guardian angels. These are some guardian angels that I have worked with myself, um, that I am really, um, that I just have experience with. I'm not going to mention any angels that I don't have any experience with. Um, these are the main ones that I work with. And of course, this is my perception, my experience, my channeling. So if anything that I share that does not resonate with you and your experience, leave it. I want you to follow your experience. Yours may be different from mine. And some of the information I share may be different than what's on the internet as well. Again, this is my experience, my perception as a channeler. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Okay, so let's talk about some of the different archangels. So first, the first one that I really feel called to talk about is Archangel Ariel. So Archangel Ariel started coming through for me within the last six months. Um, she is a very feminine energy, I'm going to say that. Also, side note, a lot of the archangels have both masculine and feminine energy. Um, they all do, I should say. Some will lean more masculine focused, some will lean more feminine energy focused, but they are not human beings, so they don't have a physical body. So they may appear to some people as being more masculine, and they may appear to some other people being more feminine. So that's why you might see imagery of some archangels having a masculine version of the name and a masculine look, and then you may see them having a feminine name and a feminine look 
on another website or from another resource. That is why. Uh, so again, they don't have physical bodies. They have this beautiful energy frequency that may lean more masculine and may lean more feminine. We're all a combination of masculine and feminine energy, right? Watch my video about that. If you haven't seen it yet, that gives you more context about this topic, but that will help you to understand. So Archangel Ariel comes through for me in a very feminine energy. Um, she is well known to be the Archangel of animals um, and pets. So if you have a strong connection to animals, love animals, if you have a lot of pets, she's definitely a, an archangel that you may want to work with. Um, she has a very loving, sweet, yet fierce energy about her. Um, she is also great for transmuting heavier, darker energies. So she will step in for me when I do energy clearings, when I do energy releasings, cord cuttings. Um, she really loves to also work with purifying your energy frequency, clearing away old attachments, old energies. So she has this beautiful kind of angel, oh, she's an angel, but she has this beautiful energy about her where not only is she this guardian and protector, protectress, I should say, of the animals, but she's great with kind of slaying, you know, the negative beings and releasing the negative energies and the negative beasts per se. So I kind of think of her as like my monster slayer in a lot of ways. She's amazing. So call her in if you need help with any of the above um, or if you need help with an animal who is sick or not doing well or if you need help manifesting an animal for yourself, manifesting a pet. Okay, let's talk next about Archangel Shamuel. Um, so Archangel Shamuel is the Archangel. He comes through for me in a very masculine energy. Um, the Archangel of peace and calm. So he has just this really soft, tender energy about him. He is wonderful to call in if you're anxious nervous, scared, fearful, stressed out about anything, call him in and just let the loving, calming vibes wash over you. He is really, really great for assisting with cultivating your inner peace and your inner peacefulness. Great Archangel to call in if you are in the middle of an argument, you need assistance. If you are in the middle of a conflict and you need assistance, if you are feeling tumultuous, kind of all, you know, jumbled up inside, frustrated, stressed out, angry, anxious, call him in and ha ask him to activate you with the energy of peace. So he's a really great one for anxiety and stress relief. Okay, next we have Archangel Gabriel. So Archangel Gabriel comes through for me in a very masculine energy. There are some people who show and share that Gabriel comes through as Gabrielle in a more feminine energy. It is the same angel, by the way, um, in my perception and from what I've channeled. So you may feel more called to connect to the more feminine Ga Gabrielle or the more masculine Gabriel, whatever feels good to you. Um, so in my perception, Archangel Gabriel comes through in a very masculine energy. His focus for me is communication and using your voice, throat chakra awareness, working with your speech, sharing yourself, sharing your thoughts, opinions, beliefs with others, and having good conscious conversations. So Archangel Gabriel is really great. He's also the messenger angel, by the way, um, and is known to be a messenger for some. So he's great if you need assistance sharing a message, perhaps having a difficult conversation, sharing specific clear intentions with someone or a group. He's great with social media. If you're a business owner, he can help you with that and projecting your voice and getting your message across. Um, so if you need assistance with communication, sharing your thoughts, maybe you need assistance with a public speaking event or a, um, an online virtual business event where you have to give a speech or share your thoughts. Ask him to come in to assist you with that. He's great with all of those things. Or if you've been having challenging conversations or conflict with a partner or person in your life, he can assist you with that as well. Okay, next we're going to talk about Metatron. 
So Archangel Metatron has a name that's a little bit different than the other angels. Some will say that this is because he was originally a human being and went through the ascension process and graduated to be an archangel. Um, I do believe there is some truth to this because his energy comes through to me more human-like than the other archangels. So I will just say that. Um, but Metatron is so powerful. He has a really, really, really powerful energy about him. Archangel Metatron is known for the, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the name, divine geometry um, that looks, he is known for Metatron's cube, which is a divine geometrical symbol. And the cube is known to help people with their personal healing and transformation process. So definitely go look up a picture of it. You will probably recognize it. You've probably seen it somewhere. That is Metatron's cube. That is his unique, unique way of energy healing. He is so, so, so powerful. He is also the keeper of the Akashic Records. And he is also the scribe for source energy so he's great for helping you with channeling if you're new to opening up your channeling gifts if you're learning how to work with the akashic records he's great to call in for that purpose um, he's great for helping with healing as well like i mentioned and he's also great for helping you learn more about yourself and connecting to yourself and your soul at a deeper level so he's a great being to call in if you're on a personal transformation journey, um, if you feel like you're going through a dark night of the soul and like you need a loving presence, but also someone who's really strong, who can guide you through that process, call in Archangel Metatron um, and ask him for his support, support his assistance, etc. Ooh, I need some water. Lots of good stuff in here, guys. Okay, let's move on to Archangel Michael. Um, so Archangel Michael is one of the first archangels that I ever started working with. And the experience for me was so profound because I finally felt like, wow, I can feel in my body that I'm connecting with this being and he is so loving. Like he's just pure love. Um, so Archangel Michael is, he comes through to me as a masculine energy again. Um, he is the divine protector. So he's amazing for psychic protection. He is amazing for helping you protect your energy field. He's also great for physical protection in general. Like if you're going through a difficult time and you need the energy of safety in your life and feeling comforted and safe and at peace, call in Archangel Michael. He can assist you with that. Um, you may see him with this like beautiful blue sword or he may come through with any other type of like instrument to help you to cut cords, cut ties, release old things from the past. Again, he has this really strong protective energy about him. So call him in if you need protective assistance. And also I would just recommend that if you haven't connected with the archangels yet, call him in first. Okay, moving on to Archangel Raphael. Um, so Archangel Raphael is the Archangel of healing. A lot of heart chakra energy when I think of Archangel Raphael. Um, he is so unconditionally loving and he is great for helping with manners of the physical body and also the energy body and emotional body and healing in general. So Archangel Raphael is great if you're going through a health issue or have a family member who's going through a health issue and you need help and assistance with making sure that they're safe during their healing process, you can call him in and ask for his assistance. You can call him in and ask for him to assist the physicians, doctors, nurses who are taking somebody in your life through surgery, for example. You can also come call him in and ask for an energy healing, ask him to balance your chakras, um, or to guide you to heal a certain part of your body or an area of your life. He is really great with the healing energy. Okay, next we have Archangel Sandalfin. So you'll notice that he has a name similar to Metatron, and that is, again, because he was believed to have been a human being and then transitioned to becoming an archangel. Again, I feel very much like this is true because he comes through with a very masculine energy. Uh, masculine. Very, yes, very masculine, but also very human-like energy as well, while still being 
having a very angelic presence. So he, to me, is really great with grounding and really great with connecting to the earth. He is the most earth-focused archangel in my awareness, in my perception, what I've channeled. He is really great if you're feeling ungrounded, out of your body, can't focus, uh, feeling out of it, disoriented, disorganized, lack of clarity. He is really great with kind of bringing you back into balance and bringing clarity into your life, helping you to see things from a new perspective, um, challenging you to kind of look at things in a different way. Um, and he's really great with helping you connect with your physical body. If you've been feeling out of touch with your body, out of your body, disassociating, not present, not aware, he is really great with bringing you back in. <laughs> so bring you back to you, bringing you back to your center, grounding you, helping you with the human stuff. He's good with that. And finally, we have Archangel Uriel. Um, so Archangel Uriel is a really another masculine energy that I work with. He is great with helping you with more of the mental body stuff, more of the intellectual um, intellectual stuff. <laughs> I know that didn't sound like the smartest thing ever, um, but he is really great with helping you with studying. He's great with helping you learn new things, with being curious, with learning, sharing, discovering, going back to school. He wants to help with all of those things. He's sort of like a librarian energy is the best way that I can describe his energy. Um, so he's really great if you're learning something new and you need a helping hand with understanding the material better. Um, he can help make sense of complicated topics in a, an easier way. So call him in and ask him to explain something to you in a more easy way to understand. So yes, so those are my favorite archangels that I work with for purpose of time on this video. I'm gonna wrap it up, um, but I wanna teach you a way that you can connect with any of the angels that I've mentioned, you may want to set the intention to connect with an archangel or a guardian angel of yours. Um, definitely go check out my video on psychic protection and discernment. This will help you learn how to connect with one of these beautiful divine beings and will give you the tips, tools, tricks of the trade for how to do that and sort of how to behind this. But what I would encourage you to do is set the intention to call in this specific energy into your field. And then I want you to feel how you feel in your body. What colors are you seeing? What energies are you sensing? Um, and be very present and aware of how you feel. That can be a really great way to get to know some of these angelic beings and to bring them into your life. But when I say that you can call in any of these angels to ask for their assistance, know that it is as simple as Archangel Michael, I need your protection. I need your help in protecting my energy field. That's all you need to do. <laughs> that intention is enough. You may wish to do a fancier meditation like the one that I show you and teach you in my psychic protection and um, discernment video. But know that you can call on all of these archangels just by setting the intention. Hey, Archangel Raphael, my mom has a doctor's appointment tomorrow. And can you please be with her during that time? I want her to make sure that her healing process goes smoothly. Another great way to work with an archangel. So all you need to do is just set the intention to call them in, ask for their help, their assistance, see my psychic protection and discernment video for more info. Link to that is below. And enjoy your connection with the angels. My gosh, it's 3333 on the timestamp. I hope you have so much fun discovering this new side of the spirit world. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And let me know in the comments below if you feel drawn to working with the angels. I would love to hear if you feel like you have a strong connection with the angels in particular. All right, sending love. Have a wonderful day.